working on it now. Yeah, good thing he's not overreacting or anything. Well, he's the boss. I may need a hand here later on, Birch. The storm's bound to make you know who jumpy. You know how they get. Gotcha. The doc's got me looking after Wake here, but holler if they get too rowdy. I'll do that, Birch. Hey, Wake, why don't you humor Dr. Hartman and give the writing a shot, huh? The typewriter's in your room. You can get to your room by those stairs, Wake. Yeah, it's not like dark forces want me to write stuff that will come true. Holy. Something's wrong. I'm not myself. It's hard to think that there's a shadow inside my head. I can only focus on writing. Everything else is a blur. I'm trapped in this cabin. Have been for days, but it's always dark outside. My editor is real. I saw her again. She's not human. It's not human. A dark presence is wearing the old woman's face. She was covered in clinging shadows. There's a hole in her chest where her heart should be. I think I've made a horrible mistake. I don't think I'm any closer to saving Alice. It's been lying to me, using me to get the story it wants, and the story will come true. Looks like the other Alan has been situated with his situation. No, oh, generator first. Hartman had mentioned that the power had been acting up. Maybe that was the reason for the generator and the work light on the balcony. The generator hadn't been activated, and there was no key. Hartman wanted me to write. I knew I couldn't, but I figured I should just play along for now. It was the only thing I could do with Nurse Birch watching me like a hawk. A one thermos? All right, let's get to writing. The white glare of the blank page in front of me hurt my eyes. My hands began to shake uncontrollably. Hey, Wake, you stay here. I'm gonna go see what's up. You just keep doing what you're doing. Be cool, okay? I didn't know what the chaos was all about, but it could be my only chance of getting out of here. Oh, no. Afraid of the crazy brothers, are ya? Not so weak now, are we? Hey guys, just a cool, well, cool heads here. Fast, aren't they? <laughs> nah. <laughs> Did I miss you? It's my store. I'm taking it. Hartman kept talking, giving Barry the grand tour, clearly proud of the place. He went on and on about his hunting trophies, and Barry was impressed. But he was here on business. He raised his voice, cut through the monologue. Hey, Hartman, where's Al? Hartman stopped in mid-sentence, annoyed at the interruption. He nodded at the hulking orderly standing nearby. The man smiled and clapped a practiced hand on Barry's shoulder. We're on a comeback tour, baby! Sinclair looked bad. That wasn't a love tap. The crazy old fart hit her hard. And if she was one of Hartman's goons, she the had it coming. I could get the key to the office wing from Sinclair. Your destiny. I had to get to Hartman's office. He had taken all my manuscript pages. That's where he'd be keeping birch. them. It's time to pay the piper. Well, at least she's knocked out. I hope. Since you're so tough, Birch. We were on the road, man. You think we haven't seen one Oh, those are the pictures. The markings on the tape said they were recordings Hartman had made of the sessions with his patients. I saw Alice's name on one of them. For a moment, I couldn't breathe right. 
Now, Mrs. Wake, can you tell me about Alan's problems? <sighs> he's more and more out of control all the time. The parties, he's so angry all the time. He's getting violent. He's... Do you mean with you? No, not with me. No, never. I... Sometimes I almost wish Alan would take a swing at me. Because at least that'd lead to a conversation he couldn't just march out of. But no. He just... Alan doesn't really sleep. And the work, well, he's not writing. At all. He sits there for hours and just gets more and more frustrated. And I can't talk to him. Yes. Tell me, Mrs. Wake. What would you say to him if he'd listen? <sighs> I don't know. I want to say... I look at you, and it's not you. Just some stranger who resembles you. Looking out from behind your eyes. And I don't like that guy much. And now it's all gonna go to hell. But you don't ever say this. No. No. I've tried, but he's not listening. He's too deep in his own problems, always going on about something else. I'm so afraid I'm gonna lose him, and we're not even talking anymore. He doesn't let me in anymore. He just keeps me in the dark. I'm so alone here, even when he's home. Please help me, doctor, because I'm at my wit's end. Well, if you can just get him here, I'll absolutely do my very best. Yeah, but doctor, you need to be careful with him. He's not just going to listen to you and cooperate. He's the most stubborn man I've ever met. Well, I'll be sure to bear that in mind. Hearing her voice, what she was saying made me happy and sick and guilty all at once. Worst of all, I recognized the words. The phone call from her. It had been a cut-up of this. Just a recording. Okay. Oh, he's been messing with me. Any more? Rudolph Lane's case is interesting. He was completely blocked, and frankly, I was about to discard him as useless. However, once Wake arrived and started writing, something changed in Rudolph. He's producing extraordinary work, increasingly dark pieces. Unfortunately, he doesn't respond to direction at all, and it's my belief that he's not so much a creator as an illustrator, perhaps, a recorder of sorts. I hadn't considered the existence of such a role before, let alone its implications, but the paintings he has produced are informative. At least he's easily controlled and useful. I wish I could say the same about Wake. It's frustrating that the best subjects are always so damn difficult to deal with. You got more tapes? I'm buying that. I was killing Wheeler, and this is the only place he could have gone. That means Wake is probably there too! Agent Nightingale, this is private property, and I will not allow you to disturb my patients. Yeah? I can get a warrant. How are your fragile little patients like that? <laughs> oh, I'm thoroughly intimidated by your mighty authority now, Agent. Listen, you smug snob. How would you like it if I busted through this gate and knocked you around a little? Agent Nightingale, first of all, I'm recording this conversation, so you might want to watch what you say. Secondly, you're not dealing with a hick now. I know the law, and if you can get a judge to grant a warrant, I'll be glad to cooperate. But you won't get one. Be advised that any further communications with me are to be made through my lawyer. I don't believe this. Good day, Agent. Yeah. You know, the doctor's an asshole, but at least he stands up to Nightingale. Because he's a bigger asshole. Okay. Oh, there's Mirror Peak. This man had me go from one side of the map to the other side of the map. There's Lover Lover's Peaks right there, and then there's the Brife, there's the mining, the mina, and then it's the Mirror Peak right there. What's next? Ghost Town? I 
Majestic Motel. Okay. We haven't visited those places yet. Yeah, that... Wait. Did we visit Ghost Town? I think we did visit Ghost Town. So it's the motel? That's an offshoot over here, so we'll see how that goes. Ooh. These are my manuscripts? Just one. Hartman wasn't happy. Mott could see it in his eyes. He quickly lowered his own. He had made a mess of it, and he knew it. The shame of failure was hard to bear. He hadn't expected Wake to say he needed more time, and he blurted out two days, less than Wake had asked for to show him who was in charge. But that wasn't part of Hartman's plan. Wait, this isn't his office? The photo on the wall caught my attention. In it, the clinic staff was standing outside the lodge. I knew the man next to Hartman. He was the kidnapper. Hartman had been playing me all along. Okay. Let me out of here! Hartman, do you hear me? I'm gonna sue your crazy quack ass to shreds! Barry? Seriously! Do you have Barry? any idea? Ow! About time! Barry! Man, am I glad to see you. We need to get to Hartman's office. It's right next door. You okay? Yeah. I mean, no! The cops found me at Rose's trailer, but they didn't hassle me too much. I'm obviously a victim in this, and I demanded to be treated as such. Or else I'd sue their asses. Speaking of asses, that fed gave me a real hard time, but I had no clue where you were. That guy's crazy, Al. But he let me go, and then I get a call from Hartman, that son of a bitch, who tells me you're here, and I should come pick you up, but when I got here, two goons clobbered me and stuck me in there. What's... what's with the cutout? I stole it from the diner to piss off Rose after what she did to us. That'll teach her. Yeah, that's a harsh punishment. Come on, pal, we gotta get going. At least Alan has a... you can hear it in his voice, he's like, yeah... Like he's got humor in him, at least in uh, all these situations happening to him. It might be a sarcastic humor, but it's humor. These were all the pages I had on me. And more. Alan, please. You're sliding back Shh, into the- Tell me one more lie and I'll shoot you in the face. Ah, well, it was worth a shot. Really, Wake, come on. Let's work together on this. You have no idea- Hartman, what... shut up! Barry, get out of here. I'll catch up with you. Get a car. Oh, Al, let's just- Go! Wake, listen to me. This is a mistake. Don't you see? Together, we can create something absolutely wonderful with your ability and my- Oh, darkness is a jealous bitch. Presence would be on me in a moment. I had to find a way out. Oh, more. Okay. Hartman followed the fall of Alan Wake with his binoculars. When the rider hit the water, he ordered Jack to take the boat to him. The spot was easy to see in the dark, even with all the extra lights in the boat. The flare floated and kept burning, even in the water. Jack turned the radio louder as the engine sputtered. The music was rough and clanking, something the Anderson brothers would no doubt have enjoyed. But Hartman chose to ignore it. Wake was finally within his reach. Okay. So the doctor knows the with the situation with the lake. And decided to play Alan along, try to use him, and now the darkness is like, nah, 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 nah. Only I get to use Alan.
All right, I'll back off. Oh yeah, I have no flashlight. I'm out. Oh no. Hurry up. What do you mean? All right, there you go. I mashed it. Open the door. Oh, not again. Oh, come on. I needed light to get the possessed bookshelves out of my way. Only one source of light. Upstairs? That's right. Uh, never mind. I'm I'm not right. Leave me alone. Look, I get you're jealous and all, but you don't have to kill me. You need me. God damn bears. Hartman knew he was no creator. He had no ambitions on that front. And he certainly didn't want to end up like every artist he had worked with here, damaged in ways that were hard to describe, or worse. It was enough for Hartman to maintain creative control and provide direction, to be a producer. That was what most of these people were in need of anyway. Of course, suitable subjects were few and far in between. Yeah, okay, I was right. Hartman has no creative abilities in him. Darkness is not a fan of that. Okay. Thank you. Oh. Ow. All right, I get it. Ow, ow, I'm here. You better throw me that flashlight. I found the car, but the gate's locked. You're going to have to go through the hedge maze over there. Barry, I don't have a light. Take this, Al. Oh, God. Look at the house, Al. I'm gonna die. I am so gonna die. Ow. Engineering saved my life, please. Thank you. Never mind. Engineering, you have failed me. Oh, and I died. In the back of the head. I found the car, but the gate's locked. You're gonna have to go through the hedge maze over there. Barry, I don't have a light. Take this, Al. Oh, God! Look at the house, Al! And yeah, that's why I'm leaving early.
house looks bad. Have you seen the inside of it? All the bookcases were trying to kill me. When a maze, always hug the left. What do you say? I stared at the Viking paraphernalia that littered the area, surrounding an unlikely centerpiece. A full-side stage complete with an impressive sound system with all the trimmings, including a dragon. It took a special kind of crazy to build something like this in a remote field. When the sky split open with a deafening boom and the music started blasting, it felt strangely appropriate. Are they gonna start playing music to save my life? Don't trust email. Okay. I'm just have to double check just in case it's like it's in reverse, you know. Okay, that was pretty close. Almost out of here. Thermos? Oh, but a page. I'll take it. Hartman hurried down the corridor. He had disliked leaving Wake when he was surely at his most susceptible to therapy. But this was not an ordinary storm. Wake had been riding, and he had woken something up in the depths of the lake. Now, it was coming for him. Hartman had naturally prepared for a situation like this. The idiot brothers would keep Wake distracted while Hartman double-checked everything, just to be sure. Okay. I think I'm getting a better picture of what happened. But they did the vacation. She drowned. He got cooped up by Hartman. And then he started writing. That opened the door for the darkness. And then all this shit's happening. Okay. And the question is... That's not really a question. It's like, did she really drown or did she just got pulled and then drowned, you know? Was it intentional? Uh, light. I still don't understand how the FBI agent is involved. Because he's just like a crazy person that just came into this small town to chase me for no reason. Oh, not him. Because to me, everything makes sense. And in the FBI, 
FBI agents. Like, yeah, I'm just here. I'm just like, what's okay? Any more of a story? No. Oh, I thought it was the other crazy person. Oh, well. Back. Alright, back off, Ravens. Why do you gotta be a six shooter? One thermos. Yay, a flare gun. Could have really needed that against the Ravens. shotgun and a page Mott knew that wake was smarter than him wake had more money a beautiful wife everything and Hartman said wake was important that made him better than Mott but Mott was calling the shots now he'd expected wake to whimper and grovel but instead he seemed willing to fight Mott knew he'd gotten under wake's skin if only Mott actually had his wife the thought made him shiver oh Mott was the kidnapper okay Hartman wasn't happy. Mott could see it in his eyes. He quickly lowered his own. He had made a mess of it, and he knew it. The shame of failure was hard to bear. He hadn't expected Wake to say he needed more time, and he blurted out two days, less than Wake had asked for to show him who was in charge. But that wasn't part of Hartman's plan. Okay, so yeah, the kidnapper, part of Hartman's plan. Use Alan. All because no one wanted to let him take a vacation. Or the wife could have been more... Or Alice could have been more honest with him. I knew you were too quiet, game. need a wheelbarrow to be thrown at me. For the moment, Barry was just glad he had survived the fall. He had been separated from Al, and there was no easy way to climb back up. He told himself he'd be okay, okay in the gloomy forest at night. He would just have to wait for a while for Al to find his way down. Barry turned when he heard the heavy footsteps and saw the movement. The man-shaped shadow lunged at him from the bushes, 
an axe held high. Barry screamed and threw up his hand. The world exploded. Oh no, they got to Barry. Damn it. I should let these battles drag out because I really appreciate the battle music or the combat music. Hartman watched as Wake's features slackened. The man was bullheaded, no doubt. Even lying on the bed, he'd almost broken Hartman's nose the second time. But with a little time, he could break Wake down, give him proper direction. Wake was easily the most promising subject he had had. Well, since Tom, really. Sleep well, Alan, Hartman whispered with a smile. Let me take care of you. He sniffed hard to clear his throbbing nose, swallowed blood, and barely tasted it. All right, so he was around with Tom. Okay. Maybe that's when the first time he saw the power come to life with Thomas. Maybe he was like a third party beforehand. Now he's uh, he got himself involved with Alan.